Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about the 2022 mid-year astro update. This is going to be a follow-up video to my 2022 year ahead forecast video. I'm going to be revisiting some of the messages that came up in that video and then I will combine them with a sort of a present update of where I feel that things are standing and project out a bit for the rest of the year and get us some updated messages about the remaining energies coming up in 2022. So I'm really excited to be uh, telling you all about this. I feel that we have a vital, vital period of time coming up in the uh, remainder of 2022 as it's shaping us up uh, for this big decision point I feel to be coming in January 2023, uh, which we have also, uh, I feel, been facing in July of 2022 as well. So we have this kind of interim period shaping up between July and and January and the actions that we take, the reviews that we engage, the uh, way that we sort of uh, project, perceive, and integrate our lifestyle during this time will have a really big impact on the year of 2023. So um, in this video, I'm going to detail some of the transits, some of the intuitive messages, and also just some uh, generalized kind of common sense guidance that I feel could be helpful for everyone at this time, kind of take us back to a grounded place uh, as it's a very kind of inspirational and nebulous time as well. So if we can combine that with some kind of just like common sense understanding of our reality and our general momentum, I think we will be able to create a really, really wonderful uh, forward movement into 2023. Um, firstly, though, I want to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor of this video. It is Let's Get Checked, which is such an awesome company and such an awesome service. With Let's Get Checked, you can take your healthcare testing into your own hands. It makes professional health testing easy by letting you get tested without having to visit a healthcare provider. They have all kinds of different tests available, including thyroid testing, other types of hormonal testing, nutritional deficiency testing, as well as a men's health, women's women's health and a general sexual health testing as well. So they have all forms of STD or STI testing as well. And I think it's a nice resource to uh, just be able to order your own tests or if you have any concerns or any specific testing that you know that you want to have done or you know that you need to have done, uh, it's very easy because it comes uh, right to you in the mail. You don't have to like go in and request it. Also, the results are completely confidential. Uh, they have a lot of wonderful accreditations. This is all on their website. You can check that out. And it's easy. It's discreet and it's uh, totally up to you to decide what you would like to have tested. So if you would like to check out Let's Get Checked, the sponsor of today's video, uh, you can actually get 25% off your first order. So you just need to use my link, uh, trylgc.com sky, and use the code sky when you check out, and this will give you 25% off your test. So uh, again, thank you so much to Let's Get Checked for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, everyone, let's move into it. But um, yes, basically, it is just a really good time to be checking things out. Um, while I feel that many implemented remedies and many, uh, I don't know, solutions to some of the problems that a lot of people are having may not really be fully in place until 2023, now is such a wonderful time. And honestly, ever since 2021, it's been a wonderful time to uh, kind of understand all of the data, okay, so that you can start to make really good decisions. And that's why I really support during this general time, you know, any type of like uh, healthy medical testing, uh, certainly check out today's sponsor, but any type that you might want to do, like with your own doctor, with your own naturopath, with your own uh, counselors, advisors, anything like that is really opening up to be really positive so that you can basically get a bulk of data with which to make really healthy and positive decisions moving into 2023. So um, yes, moving into 2023, this is not a 2023 video, but for all intents and purposes, it might as well be because uh, 2023 gets real, you all. Like 2023 is the real stuff as well as 2024. It's a very big climax point for humanity. It's a very big uh, macro climax point as well as sort of like micro revision, I feel. So if you can imagine like macro climax, micro revision happening at the same time. So as you kind of like start to revise some of the small stuff in your own experience, it leads to like a sort of greater uh, upsurge in the macro energy. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of people on like a huge elevator right now energetically. I'm seeing a lot of people um, kind of reclaiming their own essence or uh, that's what a lot of 2023 will be about. 
And again, today is not a 2023 video, but um, I need to tell you all just a little bit about 2023 uh, before we finish on 2022, okay? Um, so if you can imagine a major kind of like narrowing into what you really have always needed to be, okay? That's what to me 2023 is feeling like. And it's also feeling like the larger chapter of unfinished business that a lot of people have been in since the time of 2020 kind of came in and generated a sort of chaos that really revealed to a lot of people what was off or what was uh, not maintainable uh, and perhaps even escalated those things or uh, drove those things, those unmaintainable, unsustainable elements uh, of many's, many people's lives, drove those things to expand perhaps to the point where they couldn't be mistaken for something sustainable or mistaken for something um, healthy, okay? So we had over like 2020 and 2021, a certain growth of maybe like purgative energies that expanded. And now here, as we move into the second half of 2022, it's totally visible. So what I will first say is that you have complete visibility or complete view right now of uh, anything in your life that is not maintainable, anything in your life that is also like maybe eclipsing or obscuring some of the actual important stuff. So this is a very mainline thing that 2023 is going to come in and really um, get together. It's going to be really intolerant of these obscuring mechanisms, these uh, distracting tendencies and uh, basically like the sideline situations. Uh, so knowing that about 2023, also 2023, um, it kind of bifurcates a little bit. So there's this sort of like energetic bifurcation, I feel, where some people are called to really establish a very safe, soothing, calming, health-oriented uh, life experience in order to generate the greater momentum. And then there's another side that is very kind of like dragonic in energy so that's again preparing for like the dragon year in 2024 that shows some people really like uh flying all over the place being all over the place um and engaging in some type of perhaps even like ego narrative or if it's not ego it's like status which is very similar but um it's very much a more climactic feeling on the surface energy line so I just want to let you guys know that moving up to 2023, there's this kind of like bifurcation already starting to come up. And this is uh, underpinned by the Saturn Uranus square. It depends on each person whether Saturn or Uranus ends up being victorious with that uh, square that we've been having since 2021. Okay, it's going to be grooving back up. I'll talk about that uh, momentarily here. Uh, but it depends for you whether you're more of like a Saturn or Uranus type of person or what what maybe transits you've had of both of those planets, which one have you been more <laughs> afflicted by or, or uh, touched by, I suppose, uh, from a transit perspective in astrology. Um, that will kind of show which way this goes. Um, so it's it's either a more kind of like quiet and safe and really rejuvenating, very kind of four of swords energy, but also a consolidation because of that. It's not just a isolated feeling of kind of turning oneself off or powering down or going into a recharging phase. That's not what I feel about 2023 at all. Uh, this health-oriented, quieter, more solitary path that is cropping up is a major consolidation as well. They're both consolidation paths, but one is just much more uh, quiet and kind of micro-focused, and the other is much more loud, um, public, and visible. Uh, kind of like confetti shooting off, kind of like, um, I don't know, a pinata bursting. It's kind of like fireworks. It's kind of like a, the energy of a parade or some type of a greater, you know, brilliance being shown. So um, it's still not really set in stone, I think, for anybody which level they might get on there, but they both lead to the same place, which is going to be an important thing to know. And it depends on what is needed more for the individual. Uh, do they need a quieter time of recharging or do they need to be more like um, showy and more, um, you know, kind of theatrical with themselves and more gregarious and more kind of a mainstream, mainline uh, with their manifestational capability? So I'm thinking a little bit about that and thinking a little bit about the, honestly, the hope of 2023 and the uh, further 
contribution of a deep and personal energy to one's own actualization that really is on the line over this a greater period of time, probably over the next few years, um, we have to face 2022, okay? We have to uh, look at what's here and right now in order to get there, okay? So again, it's kind of different for everybody. Some people have really been doing a an impressive job of kind of decluttering, really asking the important questions about what needs to be in my life and what doesn't need to be in my life, who does need to be here, who doesn't, uh, and really starting to follow through on those kind of aurically calibrated and uh, well-defined intuitions. Uh, that will hopefully be where we all are, but I do feel that the rest of 2022 is in some way, I mean, there's a lot of words coming up all of a sudden, but minutia is definitely coming up. Uh, for some people, even like a infestation or some type of um, major lack of prioritization of the self or major, um, you know, kind of gauntlet that a lot of people have to go through to get there. Again, we have to understand that with such a vital consolidation or such an incredible light path being possible soon, there are a lot of uh, things that we've had to face or a lot of things that we've had to kind of seal off or separate ourselves from when it comes to dark, addictive, or time sacrificing for no apparent reason uh, energetic connecting points. So that will still be here in 2022, and that's going to be underpinned by the Jupiter retrograde that we have back into Pisces, and we'll actually have a um, very kind of spiritual and almost fantastical uh, series of realization points actually coming in October and November of 2022 that should really help us to finalize our understanding of our own personal status and our understanding of our own personal energetic and overall auric health. Uh, that will be a time of really uh, getting that data. So, you know, again, here in like July and August, you know, to get some of the more physical data, like where am I at health-wise, where am I at financially, where am I at uh, locationally? And then I feel that by uh, really like October and November, it becomes more of like a spiritual question. Where am I at with like my spirituality? Where am I at with my uh, faith? Where am I at with my um, mindsets, lifestyles, and philosophies? And then already by like a December, it's going to um, shift again. And then we're kind of, <laughs> I feel, pushed headlong headfirst into this uh, sort of bifurcation or into this new hopeful lens, okay, if we would like that. So I just want you guys to know that general timeline that this is kind of what's on the line here is like the feeling of hope or the feeling of um, second chances, the feeling of new opportunities, the feeling of graduations, the feeling of um, also crossing thresholds, uh, crossing borders, crossing boundaries. Again, when Jupiter moves back into Pisces, it uh, evokes these kinds of feelings. Um, and Jupiter isn't done in Pisces. And that's why I think we've all been having a bit of confusion lately or a bit of disarray, disorder with things is because there's still like unfinished business, okay? There's still like things that have been really long running here at this point in uh, late 2022. There's still been a long running feeling of like, oh my gosh, I've had this thing that just goes on and on and on and it never gets resolution. I can't figure out this mystery health issue. I can't figure out this like a uh, job promotion. I can't figure out how to get to this like financial point of well-being where I can actually do what I want to do. There's this feeling of things being very 10 of wands, very um, also eight of pentacles vibes in the tarot, which many people have already overcome by the time this video is coming out. But for those of you who haven't, for those of you who still feel like, you know, it takes 70 hour work weeks to get by, it takes um, three different jobs, it takes all of these kind of like majorly over productive considerations in order to get where we want to be, that will not be the case at all in 2023. So um, there is for a lot of people still that energy though, because Jupiter still hasn't really figured out what its uh, course of Pisces was and won't until like November of this year uh, through Scorpio season, will it uh, understand the greater spiritual meaning of the previous decisions, the previous faith-based decisions, the previous uh, greater life force-oriented decisions, 
may not be understood until then. So um, that's one thing that I would also prepare you all for this mid-year astro update video is like uh, you might not know the exact answer to things for quite a while. Like it could be November, it could be December before things really get clear because I feel that there's such a chaotic kind of array of weird micro experiences like a kind of housekeeping that we have to do or um, taking out the trash type of thing, random chores, random errands, random kind of tying up of loose ends in order to generate this bigger array of hope, okay? In order to generate this um, kind of carte blanche for some people, but it's not really like that because nobody can really access true carte blanche, I feel, at this point in time because of the weight of Pluto <laughs> in Capricorn and moving towards the anoretic degree. That will be more possible once it gets into Aquarius uh, in like 2024 or uh, 2023. It's already going to be really evoking Aquarius energy. We're already feeling that now. We're feeling that huge generational shift, but it's not in yet. So people can't really have the brand new start or the brand new beginning during this time, but they can have the best version of their current engagements and they can really get rid of some of this excess energetic density and weight and that is a lot of what this uh mid-year to end of year 2022 is about it's about um culling excess density Ooh, that's a great terminology for it culling excess density um i would definitely write that down i'm writing that down myself culling excess density okay so excess density sorry how many times can i say it take a look at what is feeling really dense in your experience what is something that weighs you down? What is something that is an anchor? What is something that you can't utilize? It's like positive potentiality and it sort of exists in a sort of vacant or dense capacity in your experience. I feel that these are like such a pivotal aspect of the energy. And if you already have really lightened your load, if you've already really lighten things up in your experience you might not be facing this but i feel that like everybody is kind of facing this in a way whether this be from relationships uh belongings uh property um because it's very earthy right we have this like uranus mars north node in taurus as well as pluto return in capricorn uh, so virgo season we're going to have these like grand earth trines that really for some people might generate a lot of wealth might generate a lot of um I don't know, uh, incredible, you know, materialism, or I want to call it almost uh, grand materialism or grand kind of uh, feelings of ownership over certain belongings, items, or uh, properties, things like that could definitely come up right now. But also, if you're already there, it could be like, um, oh my gosh, how do I deal with any of this stuff? This is also heavy. This is also unwieldy. This is also um, kind of confusing to work with. But by Virgo season, you should really see, uh, by late Virgo season, a good remedy for that. If not during this transit of Uranus, Mars in the North Node, I feel that Uranus, Mars in the North Node transit, which I did make a video about on its own, um, that's also generating a lot of this energy it could cause a huge change in fortune for people it could cause a huge shift in ownership or a huge shift in uh what is also giving back to me what is giving back to someone what they're expecting like expectations are going to change up and there could even be a bluntness or a sudden shock about um anticipation expectations and what we expect to get right because taurus is about earnings whether that's money whether that's whatever it is what we expect to be given okay uh sign of taurus really gets um for some people shaken up but then also for some people perfectly kind of uh cut up or um when i say cut up i mean like as in in the same way that a, a beautiful plant is pruned or like a wonderful cake is kind of cut into pieces um, it becomes actually edible or it becomes actually more pristine through the shaping. Uh, so like a really good haircut, you know, or a really good uh, gardening, a really good gardener doing the perfect pruning to uh, something around you. Something can really be shaped up wonderfully with this, but it might not be in a very predictable or <laughs> comfortable way. It might not feel comfortable to have this shaping up, but it will, I think, really lead to beauty if we uh, let it, okay? Okay. Um, so with that having 
uh, been in effect during the time this video is being filmed. I'm filming this during the lead up Mars applying to the Uranus Mars in the North Node, uh, to Uranus in the North Node. Um, there's a greater call to action with that for sure. And I think some people do have to take a chance or have to take a risk with it, but you want to be very careful and cautious because um, I think that everybody can kind of afford a sense of risk or a sense of unknown now, but I also feel that it's not the best time for a sense of unknown because it feels that as we move into these greater uh, spheres of hope or these greater spheres of um, wonder in the oncoming years, that that might be a better time to, I don't know, like cash in good fortune or good karma than now, okay? Um, so you kind of want to let things uh, lay where they fall with this year as well, because I don't actually feel that most people feel a super huge amount of meaning from what they gain during this time. But then for some people, a smaller group of people, it is life changing. Okay, I mean, I can't say that the Uranus Mars North Node, what is gained or lost during that time is not like life changing. It is, especially because of uh, the other transits. But I wouldn't try to make it or force it to be that either, because that could bring about accidents or that could bring about errors or mistakes. We almost want a hands-off kind of allowing things to follow their own momentum and have a life of their own. Then we want to really, I don't know, be the mastermind of anything or be like the decision maker or the executive or the, uh, you know, person who chooses the huge momentum of some type of a majorly important thing. I can't think that that's a great place to be right now because of the because of the cluttered nature of the energy right now, because of the way in which so many people feel that things just aren't quite right or that things just aren't, you know, um, in a state of density that they wish that they were again, it's too dense right now. Uh, because of that, a lot of people will experience some of the ex the um, motions or some of the choices of the now, of the present year of 2022. They might, uh, just because of their lower vibrational state, experience even good choices as not so great ones. So you might not want to be so connected to that, or you might want to kind of let the group make the decision or let the um, deal or the uh, ideas or the ways in which things could change move with their own momentum rather than really trying to invest your own momentum and trying to control things okay so it's a basically long story short it's not a time where we want to really utilize full force control here in the end of 2022 i think that's really important the chiron mars jupiter conjunction in aries would have us thinking otherwise okay would have us thinking wow i need to control everything i need to get everything the way i want it to be i need to like uh, be on the chariot, you know, I need to be um, changing things up, I need to be ascending, I need to be this, I need to do that. Like, it's um, it's not only narcissistic, it's more like a desperate kind of, from a desperate place of wounding with Chiron, okay, we step into this kind of childish, self-imposed decision-making with Chiron, Jupiter, Mars, and Aries, and it's not all bad, some people need to do it, um, in some cases, the density is so extreme or the situations have gone on for so long that it takes that kind of childish push or it takes that kind of immature force just to break things up to where they can actually be divided in a way that lead to a greater uh, alchemy of life. But there's a huge limit to it. And I think it can be addictive, you know, being that decision maker, being that authority, being that, uh, being that uh, choiceful person can be addictive and also it can bring about it a certain like um, illusion of grandeur and that's going to be reinforced by the Jupiter retrograde back into Pisces. This um, cusp that Jupiter is currently retrograding on of Aries and Pisces definitely deals with grandeur, it deals with religiosity, it deals with faith and also the like um, resurrection of goals or the state of things which we thought were worn out or thought didn't have a purpose all of a sudden kind of like resurrecting into a greater sense of purpose or uh, use. So it's also possible with these energies to have like an X come out of the woodwork. It's possible to have not just an X, but an old type of essence, okay? Or even like older spirits or older uh, things which we used to not or, or have not in recent times identified with. So you want to kind of really have a good third eye chakra and aura to deal with this stuff because 
there's this like allure or this sentimentality with the older ancient stuff of our own experience, which we might be drawn to. And this was particularly evident in cancer season of 2022. We had this kind of um, evidence of, wow, I want to see how things used to be. I want to maybe in this greater cycle of relieving myself of density of the past, I also want to understand the past. And I find that to be beautiful. And 2023 is going to reconnect us to this again as well. Um, this sort of like, I need meaning, I need understanding, I need to see why things happen. Not just knowing that they're there, not just knowing that they happen, but knowing why, that why factor, that that deeper understanding. I mean, that's why this YouTube channel exists. That's why I do what I do is basically um, in a quest for greater meaning. And um, that is only going to be growing regardless of which path we take or regardless of how we choose to engage uh, with the past or not. Also, um, this might be a harsh thing for some people, but there is kind of a like... Um, uh, how can I even explain this intuitive message? There's a bit of like a garbage disposal type of thing. You know, like those machines and sinks that like uh, do like uh, the garbage disposal. And it's uh, that is happening, I think, to some people with the really old outworn stuff. So that's going. A lot of that old outworn stuff is going and it might not be right this second, but I do feel that 2022 energetically for some people has just been like pushing in so many new experiences, so many new goals, so many new wants and and potentials as a kind of disposal mechanism for stagnant or um, completely done for stuff. And I mean, I almost have to get visceral with you all about this. And, and some of you totally already get this and it's not even a necessary message, but you wouldn't like reach into the garbage disposal and think that that's usable stuff anymore, would you? Uh, sometimes when cancer energy, okay, cancer season that um, is still actually, and it's a July 19th when I'm filming this, um, it has us sometimes thinking that there's value in that. And there is because the earth actually needs that to kind of restore itself. The earth has a certain way of working with disposal and, um, you know, elements or matter that humans that are a threat to humans are actually needed by the earth. So um, cancer has a rulership over this kind of thing as well as Scorpio. Um, but humans who are particularly connected to the earth or who are uh, connected to certain ancient energy lines can forget that they don't need that stuff, okay? <laughs> they don't need this old ancient stuff that's uh, decaying. So decay is working its way out also right now. That's kind of like the death card in the tarot. It's like a, a removal or a disposal of certain decayed things. So with that in mind, um, this can manifest in certain harsh ways. Like you can lose old sentimental things. And that's why I was recommending... Uh, over cancer season, you know, if you want stuff, like uh, be deliberate about that, like archive stuff, put it into safekeeping, put it into a place where it is really directly annotated to be what it is as a certain archive or as a certain um, sentimental artifact of sorts. Otherwise, it might disappear during this time. So things could get thrown out. Um, things could, like you could have like someone, I don't know, break into a storage building. You could have like weird things like that. Okay. Because the universe is actually in a culling period and it's culling certain things that are weighing us down. Um, and it might accidentally cull, not accidentally, but if things aren't placed or deemed or labeled as important and they're strewn about, or they're in places that don't make sense, or they're in the garbage. Okay they're going to be thrown out and they're going to be taken back by the earth. So we have to also think about what are we throwing away right now? Are we throwing away things that are important to us? Are we disposing of things that are um, meant to be archives or meant to be history? And vice versa, are we keeping archives or history or artifacts of things that needed to be disposed of? This is a difficult, difficult window for hoarders, okay? As you might see some people being like, oh my gosh, that... Um, plastic cup that I've been drinking out of is an artifact, or you could then also see on the other side of it people like not being very careful with um, important things, okay? Uh, one of the psychic images I've been getting is like the curation of museums, okay? So that says to me that, and I've talked about that in other videos, but um, basically I feel that people are moving into a greater state of curation and wanting to care for certain objects or certain experiences, events, or 
um, energetic fields in a very deliberate type of way instead of just letting them work themselves out. Um, so I do think that um, at the macro level, we might see a new museum culture. We might also see a privatization of certain like um, important items or sentimental items, and that could lead to a greater uh, market for these types of things as people might be wanting like um, antiques or um, even like a crystals or uh, ancient things uh, within their homes, or they might want to curate their own spaces or even have rooms in their homes dedicated to like, I don't know, artifacts or sentimental items, archives, libraries, such things as that. And that's uh, not going to be quite available this year, but that's uh, cropping up in the energetic escrow, I feel, right now. Um, so we do have a lot more care happening. As, as It's kind of like a reaction, I think, to the uh, digital age, where things are so... Um, things are not physical, things are not real, things are entity, things are uh, virtual, things are not holdable. So it's going to, I think, lead to a greater valuation for the physical items or for the physical world as a sort of coping mechanism to the kind of loss of time or loss of energy within uh, technology and social media. So that could also be like a cool kind of mundane message for um, ending 2022. I think that it's a really wonderful time, you know, not to uh, fall into like idolatry per se, but to maybe have objects or to have uh, jewelry or necklaces that you feel represent a certain path or a certain thing that you went through. Like if you've overcome an illness, if you've overcome a heartbreak, if you've overcome some type of major betrayal, it might be good to symbolize that with some type of physical object here. Um, that can be really positive because what can also happen, this is an important, important message. I'm so happy this is coming through. People can start to get timeline confusion with the Jupiter retrogrades on the cusp of Aries and Pisces. People might not realize that it's 2022. People might be connecting with a lot of their different timelines and they might be like, okay, in 2015, I was this person and I had these values and that's kind of like seeping in, but I'm not actually living that life now. Also, you could see like, um, okay, 2009, I wanted this and I had this certain consciousness and now it's coming back in here. And at the same time, like I don't look anything like I used to back then, but I'm connecting to that consciousness. And you see, you start to get these like multi-dimensional uh, reality experiences, which are not bad things at all. That's actually like growth. That's a spiritual evolution to have the merging of these things. But with that can come a bit of overlap. Whereas like back in 2009, you might not have had that betrayal yet and you might not have learned through betrayal. So you could like maybe not be thinking with some of the lessons you've learned and trying to like impose like 2009 energies. And then you could like set yourself up for another betrayal because you hadn't learned that lesson yet. So what, what these like objects or symbolisms can do is they can remind us of how far we've come while we start to journey with some of the timeless aspects of ourselves. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, certain symbolic objects or certain um, methods, okay? This can even be like degree programs. This can be following through on old unfinished business uh, property. Like, a, again, this is a bit of materialism here, isn't it? You know, the symbolic objects, the uh, properties, the, you know, pieces of paper we seek through like a uh, school or whatever. But it seems to me to be serving some type of higher purposes. People really need to see their progression or they need to be able to feel the way that they've progressed and the way that they've grown so that they don't fall into like illness or low vibrations and get a sort of like haplessness about their current trajectory. You know, I've been seeing a lot of people, you know, seeking um, healing around mystery illnesses, around fatigue, around um, such things as that. And I would see that as a greater... Um, I don't know, lack of a very specific kind of pointy purpose or a very, kind of lack, uh, like maybe we need smaller short-term goals to connect to, to have a greater growth cycle around. Uh, sometimes when things get too Catholic, okay, and when I say Catholic, I mean like universal. I'm not talking about the religion, but I'm talking about, okay, when things get too universal or too global or too um, devoid of boundaries, they um, can lead to haplessness and illness because we can't have like a, you know, adequate boundaries or we can't really shape things. And again, we're in a greater time of shaping and 23 and 24 are going to further shape and further shape things. So I think it's better to be deliberate with that versus like letting it just play itself out uh, in a non-deliberate way.
Okay. Um, anyway, everyone, what I want to talk about uh, briefly is mainly the uh, main transits that I feel, which I've already uh, kind of referenced so far. But I'm um, speaking about them specifically. First, um, it's good to prepare in advance for the Saturn Uranus squares, which will reactivate uh, in full swing from the time of October 1st until about November 15th. So we have about a month and a half of this uh, exact uh, and close to exact within one degree uh, Saturn square Uranus again. So these were uh, really in effect in 2021 and they were happening a lot in 2021. Uh, so the feeling of a gauntlet, the feeling of conflicting faith, conflicting beliefs, you know, uh, conflicting identity crisis. Okay. Um, this is going to not come back in the same form that it did in 2021, but it's good to prepare in advance. There could be like unexpected delays. There could be um, also a bulk of assignments or a bulk of uh, tasks, errands, or fulfillments, okay? So especially if you're uh, a business owner or if you have a lot on your plate as it is, you wanna make sure you don't take on extra things during that time of October 1st through mid-November and really honestly for the rest of 2022 because these, even though it's only exact during that window, um, it is actually um, in effect for the rest of the year 2022 by a wider orb. Uh, so we honestly, um, even though it's not close into orb right now as I'm filming this, it's close enough to feel. It's close enough to still feel like these big like yes or no questions and these big decisions. I think that's also why that bifurcation is coming up in 2023 because of this square. It's really kind of um, introduced polarity alongside the Pluto return of the U.S., especially if you're in the U.S. It's a very polarized time. It's a very uh, bipolar energy. It's a very kind of like extreme like it's going to be this way or it's going to be that way and because of that i think that it will introduce a greater kind of uh, moderate result or uh, a greater kind of um you know middle of the way balance i mean obviously like offset this with like the energy of temperance balance and um you know compromise the compromise really is the key with a saturn uranus square but it may not be possible for some people but if it is I would definitely recommend it. Like if you have any like options in your life, especially if you have like polarized problems, like where you have like really extreme results that you have to choose from, I would really quickly accept any kind of compromise that you can. So, um, you know, uh, counter offers, um, ways that things can work and have resolution and benefit both parties. Okay. It's a very, very vital time for negotiations, for mediations, for um, anything that uh, sees some type of end to conflict rather than prolonging it with a need for extreme, unyieldable results to be met that never will be met. So the problem with Saturn Uranus Square is you can have uncompromising wants for windfall or wants for um, huge gains. And people won't compromise. They reject like the uh, smaller offer. They reject the compromise. And this leads to a prolonging of chaos or a prolonging of purgative phases, a prolonging of uh, things kind of being in a pending stage or in a state of non-movement. So that leads to stagnation and that leads to... Um, great threat for some people due to stagnation or due to still dealing with these problems or these issues that never had to go on this long. So definitely the prolonging of um, global conflicts, the prolonging of interpersonal conflicts, the prolonging of, I don't know, things like being on the market or things being like up for sale but not being sold and kind of like having to like deal with it day in and day out. It's very exhausting, okay? The Saturn Uranus square is an exhaustive transit, and always the greater spiritual um, notion or need whenever we experience the energy of exhaustion is to face stagnation and to face also the deeper paradigmatic root of why things are so unnecessarily drawn out or so over contributed to. We have to ask a greater question of our philosophy on energetic investment when we deal with exhaustion or when we deal with stagnation. We have to ask a greater question of life force and like, okay, I'm a human and is this what I want my life to be about? 
Um, am I going to have to take a loss to like move on with my life that might be preferable rather than having an entire like life full of prolonged conflicts or prolonged exhaustive situations? That's the greater question of the Saturn Uranus square, and that's going to have resolution, I feel. In fact, the Uranus Mars North Node conjunction is a resolution point for that. It is an opportunity to um, release or even through conflict finally solve or um, even uh, for some people surrender or have some type of, uh, again, loss that gives so much more in the future. As I feel that any loss that comes during 2022, any accident, any pain point really might be a long-term benefit, okay? Because, because it teaches us about why it happened and no loss happens for no reason, okay? Um, so it's a win-win situation that we're in here. And that's another thing about a Saturn Uranus square is it's like it's kind of a indulgent kind of conflict um, in a way, or at this point, by this time, if we're still in the same conflicts or if we're still in the same exhaustive phases, at this point, I consider it to be indulgent. Maybe it wasn't in 2021, but at this point in time, it's like, let's get on with things, okay? And that's, I think, is how the energy is going to feel. It's like, let's move on here. Let's get on with our lives. Let's, um, you know, live life, you know, instead of uh, devoting our life force to these conflicts. So um, that is going to be a big part of the uh, ending chapter of this year. Um, another transit, okay, uh, that will be really important is, yes, Jupiter's retrograde back into Pisces, which will um, be happening right when we hit Scorpio season. So I think it's like right on October 21st, actually, where we have um, Jupiter retrograding back into Pisces. And it's not going to last very long at all. So it's like literally, I think I have it written down here. Um, I'm kind of giddy about this transit. That's going to be an interesting one. I'm just searching through a lot of, a lot of notes. Um, yeah, I just have written down Scorpio season brings in Jupiter and Pisces. Uh, okay, by December 20th, it's back in Aries. So actually through Scorpio and Sagittarius season, we have Jupiter in Pisces. And what a problem solving... Mm, I don't know if I would call it problem solving, but that was the first word that came up. But what a finalizing... Um, end of the story, graduating energy, that is, that's really beautiful to see, conclusions in reach during that time. So that's what we're leading up to here, you all, and that's what I want you to understand. It might feel cluttered, it might feel like full of minutia and full of like flotsam and jetsam, as I like to say, but this is the last little bit of that um, in the level that it has been over 2021 and 2022. Uh, as Jupiter moves into Aries on December 20th of 2022, that, I think, narrative is going to fulfill itself. And I think that it's a greater spiritual question. It's a greater question of faith. It's a greater question of um, motivation towards a certain path. Why am I in this? Why am I doing this? What is my, what is my purpose? Not, not like my aspiration or my ambition, but what is my maybe functional purpose in this narrative? And I think that will be answered during this uh, November to December window, or it's uh, through the events that we go through or through the last stages of a certain very, very long running process, very long running energy uh, fulfilling itself. Uh, now we will uh, achieve a greater freedom or a greater hope or a greater confirmation of our own capability and our own um, our own talent, tact, and merit to actually, with our own hands, create something. So that's like the positive that I feel of this uh, later part of 2022. It's really demonstrating uh, individual power and it's demonstrating like at the micro level, what people can really do for themselves and what it's led to, like uh, the result of many gambles for some people or the result of many projects, many irons in the fire, may thrust more irons into the fire, indeed, as Jupiter is indeed uh, moving back into Aries. And we'll have to kind of go through this Jupiter Chiron thing again over the next year. Um, so I'm not feeling it as like the end of the story. 
uh, or the end of a story, but I am feeling it to be the culmination of maybe a certain ethic or a certain um, series or a certain um, even caricature of events really is summing up there. And they can be reinstated, they can be redone as well, but it's not in that window again, or it's not in that same way. So it is a finalization here. It is a, a rewarding energy if we can really not succumb to ego and not succumb to comparison as well, because we have a comparison crisis, I think, also coming up in the next few years, where people might really be like living lives completely devoted to comparison um, and generating new biases, 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 uh, relating to comparison. So if we can kind of, uh, and that that's maybe a greater argument for this more peaceful, calm path coming up in uh, 2023, um, it might be way less uh, connected to comparison. But... It's also important to um, realize that uh, Saturn is making its uh, final runs through Aquarius as well. Um, it won't be until March of 2023 that we have Saturn in Pisces, but that's only like eight months away as I'm uh, filming this, so that's not that far off. So we have like eight more months of Saturn in Aquarius, and this kind of like later degree Saturn in Aquarius is going to determine a lot about like popular culture and a lot about um, group orientation, network orientation, uh, professional cultures as well, uh, will be challenged and stressed over this next six months. And then when Saturn goes into Pisces in March of 2023, it's no longer really about that stuff. It's about the greater question of like art, spirituality, uh, religion for some people, and uh, long-term stuff. Okay, so we have Jupiter moving back into these later degrees of Pisces, maybe in a way activating that Pisces archetype in a Jupiterian way, which is good. I think that that will maybe then pave the way for a nicer Saturn transit because Jupiter has so recently been in Pisces. Um, I think that the Saturn transit in Pisces, I mean, I, I can't even connect that much to it yet um, unless I really <laughs> devoted myself to doing that in a specific video. But um, what I will say is a lot of the things that we think are problems right now, a lot of the things that we have identified as like kind of concerns or worries, especially regarding professionalism, regarding um, career networks, regarding uh, even political networks or uh, something relating to uh, group orientation. A lot of that stuff is not going to really um, merit much if you're super focused on it or if you're super comparison oriented or if you're super, I don't know, um, worried about what other people think of you. That's really the key thing because Saturn and Pisces can turn that into a major kind of like black swan uh, complex. And it's better to solve that here. So that's something that I would also reinforce. That's a good thing to say with this video because there's a really good, good chance here in Tiger year, right, of uh, 2022 to get confident about yourself, to get yourself in a place where you feel like, you know, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care um, about that type of thing. If you're somebody who... Um, struggles a lot with other people's opinion of you, with other people's um, words about you, the gossip of other people, if you lose sleep over that kind of thing, I think that this is a particularly important period of time to face that head on, even to get counseling about it, even to work with that, because I think the next few years could be really disruptive for people who have um, appearance insecurity, for people who have a need to people please or for people who need to have like the group uh, shouting their praises, you know, um, that will come naturally if it's meant to be. Um, but I also feel like you have to be careful with uh, changing yourself or altering yourself with as Saturn gets closer to Pisces and in these last few degrees of Aquarius, uh, you know, things like plastic surgery, things like um, also a lot of money invested into things that we think will make people like us more. Okay, with Saturn moving towards Pisces could totally fall flat and people might not even think about it. So people can basically deplete their own resources in order to be liked by other people and it doesn't even have that effect. Okay, that's the downside of Saturn in Pisces. And I think even late Saturn in Aquarius can be like that because it also strives for group acceptance or it strives for um, authority within group dynamics. So um, basically whatever you can do to just establish yourself and establish who you are and your identity in a way that is true to you to the point where it feels like a relaxation or it feels like a nice 
healing space just to like be you, you know, that is the best thing that I can recommend uh, moving out of 2022. Like find what you love, find what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel healthy and happy. And at, beyond that, like try to not care that much what other people think about it because once you're in that field of energy, that's just a never ending cycle. That's a never end, that's kind of a trap. You know, we have these certain like traps um, in the earth plane, like a debt traps, um, insecurity traps, existential traps. Um, this would be a great video for another day, maybe something for Patreon or for a YouTube video and a very relevant to the 2023 year cycle. Um, there are these like, um, what I would almost call like uh, satanic traps that get like perfectly healthy, good people caught up in like mental loops, um, that basically dispel their own paths or sacrifice their resources so that they don't have a strong enough foundation to really accomplish what they're meant to do. So like a big house payment, a big car payment can be like that, but also popular culture that reinforces certain looks, certain appearances that most people can't really get to is another way to do it. That can become a debt trap and that can also just become a psychological trap, like a constant comparison bias. Um, and a need to be seen a certain way and uh, striving towards that is a big sacrifice of energy toward what we might actually really need to do. Um, but then for some people it's like cool too, like if you're a fashion designer or if you're, um, I don't know, creating like a skincare line or something, I mean you might want to tap into those types of fields, but um, not in a destructive way, not in a way that's reinforcing these traps, but in a way that's like healing. But yes, it's uh, beauty isn't a bad thing. Beauty is wonderful and beauty comes through having a greater auric lightness, okay? There's a lot of glamorization in Hollywood about paths that are, I don't wanna say dark paths, because darkness in and of itself is not bad because there's, you know, we have this light and dark balance that uh, all spirituality recognizes. But I almost wanna say more like destructive paths or, um, you know, the glamorization of pain or the glamorization of suffering is something we need to really be careful about moving towards Saturn and Pisces because that is what that archetype is like. It is a Saturnian energy of, of the uh, suffering and pain that uh, Pisces can evoke. And um, that is a trap, but yes, a lot of uh, wonderful art and motivation comes from that and it's not totally avoidable. It is a part of the human condition, but I do think that we have to be careful about glamorizing it. And I think the ending of the Saturn and Aquarius in a positive way could project for us or show to us ways that we can detach or ways that we can like create certain structures in our lives that can just be good and can just, because again, Saturn is at home in Aquarius, right? It's its traditional rulership. So this very mature Saturn in Aquarius, especially once it goes direct again later this year, I'll make a video about that when it comes time. Um, that's going to be a really healthy place to be making life decisions, okay? Once we get Saturn direct in the final degrees of Aquarius, that's going to be a wonderful time to make decisions about like buying houses, about uh, making businesses, about um, uh, legacy heritage planning, okay? Because we can be like detached enough and less emotionally motivated to actually make good decisions. Uh, so that could also be a preparation. Um, let me actually get a date for you all about when Saturn goes direct and we can know. Uh, let me just check this. We're doing this in real time today. No time for editing. Let's see, let's see. Ooh, what a beautiful date. Okay, so Saturn goes direct on October 22nd, 2022. So we've got uh, 10, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, cool. So from that time of like October 22nd, 2022 until um, March of 2023, that Saturn direct in Aquarius um, over four and a half months, we're also going to have an all planets direct in January, 2023. That's why that's going to be such a wonderful time for, for the big decisions. Okay. Cause we have a direct Saturn and it's healthy, lovely and mature part of Aquarius along with all planets direct. That's going to be such a, and I'm just going to tell you guys that right now, like what can you do here in like July or whenever you're listening to this in 2022 to like guarantee yourself a sober, healthy period of decision-making from especially like January until March of 2023, because we're gonna have all planets direct, we're gonna have a 
healthy, healthy Saturn and a lot of healthy transits to make important life decisions. Like I'm talking long-term decisions, okay? Um, not so great to make them right here as I'm filming this. You know, Uranus, Mars, North Node, conjunct in Taurus, and probably not the time to make a long-term life decision. Uh, also, we have Saturn retrograde. We have a lot of retrogrades happening. So we're getting the motivation here. Like, why do we become compelled to make big life decisions? And it's not always from easy stuff that compels us to, like, get that stuff together, right? Um, if things were easy, those things would probably already be in order, and we wouldn't have to think about it. But because things are looking so good and so uh, powerful for big life decisions from January and February 2023, I would say that things have to be pretty dense right about now. So if you are struggling with density or pain, try to have faith that things are going to really get pristine and clear. And try to not just have faith, but try to reinforce it with action, like cleaning up your sleep cycles, cleaning up your diet, cleaning up your um, also psychological, uh, ooh, what do I wanna call this? Psychic attacks are zooming around like crazy right now because people have really lost control with the heavy uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction we had in Pisces. For some people, they really lost control of their like uh, uh, background thoughts. So especially if you're noticing that you're like thinking negatively of other people, or you're feeling jealousy, envy, wrath, um, any of the seven deadly sins. Okay, those could be really prevalent with this Jupiter retrograde um, on the cusp of Aries and Pisces. Alongside the Chiron, Jupiter, Mars, and Aries, it's a very prolific time for um, sin. Okay, and that has a certain religious tone to it, but it's just important to be said. It's a very prolific time. Um, but that is going to also have... Um, resolution and those i think will have to be faced and i think that uh, those will have to be accounted for so it's an important time i think uh starting now and and we might have been at maybe the climax or the crux of certain like uh harsh dense thought forms okay here in july uh, we want to really clamp down on that and clamping down really is not the right way to think about it because as people try to clamp down on things they sometimes make it more alluring, you know, like when people try to quit a substance or when people try to quit an addiction, that like feeling of wanting to quit makes it so hard because it makes it feel like a forbidden fruit or it makes it feel like something that is more wanted than it might actually be. So it's better when dealing either with addiction or with uh, negative thought forms, whatever uh, is there, it's almost better to coax yourself into more positive things. So like replacement is almost better. So rather than feeling like I need to quit this coffee, I need to quit this way of thinking, I've got to quit this sleep, like a sleep cycle. It's better to think, well, what could I replace that with? Um, and how could I then maybe face the greater theme of addiction through like counseling therapy or uh, psychoanalysis? while I'm replacing with healthier things. That to me feels like a better way to be working with these addictive or um, you know, negative dark uh, energetic tendencies that might be coming up for some people right now. And um, what I will conclude on for this video, and this is a positive, uh, very positive thing to conclude on, um, there is a possibility due to the erratic way that the energy connecting points have been kind of zooming around, uh, there is a possibility for major windfall, okay, over the next like six months. Um, I'm talking like hugely unexpected, positive, like karmic repayments. Um, and it can go the other way. I mean, this can be like losses, this can be uh, things like that, but I don't feel that they're like impoverishing. It's more like, oh, I lost something that, you know, I was prepared to lose. Um, but because it is so... Uh, worrying because there is such a polarity about the energy right now that which seems to be a loss can bring about such a much more grand gain and also as we go through something hard like it might like really in a polarized way shift to the opposite extreme and become like a huge blessing okay um so there is definitely a possibility for that and i want you guys to um maybe 
allow yourself to not be that upset about anything that seems to go wrong or anything that seems to be like overwhelming, overbearing. Uh, it's good to realize how we're reinforcing that and to maybe think about reworking our own reinforcement of difficulty or our own reinforcement of making things harder or more overwhelming than they have to be. That's important. But equally, it's important to not be overwhelmed by it or that which does overwhelm us or that event or that outcome or that result should never be overwhelming or hard because if it seems that way, I feel that due to the polarity, it's going to bring about a huge kind of like equal and opposite reaction. So that brings to mind a greater time of rebalancing. Uh, the scales definitely rebalancing. The karmic scales really are doing their stuff right here in latter 2022. And as we move into 2023, we will really start to be able to place that and work with that outcome or work with that result. Um, so that's just important to know. And that's the best thing I think that I can leave you all with is that um, this is a time that deals with polarized karmic outcomes that reinforce where we actually need to be. And because of that, I don't feel that it's really anything bad or that it's really anything uh, that problematic unless we want it to be, unless we want to reinforce feelings of sadness, loss, lack, problems, or, or what have you. So it, it, now we need to reinforce gain. We need to reinforce our own abundance so that we see what we do get as not just a tool for some type of greater elevation, but as like really valuable in its own right. So um, valuing that which we do have is important. Finding gratitude for what we actually have, okay, what we actually connect to as North Node in Taurus can make us get like this like, I don't know, sheen of lack on that which is currently here to motivate greater elevation. I would definitely recommend cutting through that now and really enjoying what is here as you start to um, understand the data that you get and understand where you want to go from here. Enjoy this space so that the next space can be enjoyed, okay? Anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out today's sponsor. It's linked below, uh, trylgc.com slash sky. And uh, check out a thyroid kit or some type of uh, nutritional kit as I think that these can be really helpful uh, for us to understand what might be lacking in our own system. You know, uh, sometimes just a simple nutritional deficiency might be all that it ever was, <laughs> you know? It's really good to know, and I think that it's a great resource to have uh, any type of tests available that uh, you need that is offered by them, and uh, definitely go and check it out. I think that they have a lot of more information on their website if you want to get more uh, from them to understand more about their service. Uh, check out my link below. It will be the top link in the description box. And don't forget to use the code SKY when you check out to get a 25% off discount for uh, any test of your choice. So um, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next week at the same time for another live premiere. Have a great week. Much love. Bye.